Well, as Gerber dives in to the premium pocket knife space, and as we inspect the two versions of the Savvy from Gerber Gear, we'll see if they slice through the competition or if they're too dull to cut out a place in our EDC collections. You know, for years, Benchmade kind of had the market on Pivot, their Axis Lock, um, most brands call it now a Pivot Lock design, really, really cool. Then once that patent got released a few years ago, Gerber came out with the Sedulo, uh, really competing with that um, Griptilian, and in a lot of ways, uh, very similar and a great competitive option, you know, and, and really has sliced a, a space in my collection. I regularly rotate between that and my Griptilian, kind of just depends on my feeling that day. Well, now they've transitioned that over into more of a premium space with the Savvy. And the Savvy's right here have that style of a pivot lock we're going to dive into it. it's you know supposed to be very unique but these are also going to be having you know premium fit and finish and materials it's got 20 cv steel on these blades and so we're going to dive right into these american made folders and what they have you know offering to us and what if any you know maybe design flaws or issues do we run into so let's dive right in with the blades themselves three inch three and a half excuse me three and a half inch blades from handle to tip so that's excellent good full size great modified warren cliff design meaning that it, it's a warren cliff uh, but it really travels for quite a while i really like it it kind of stands out from a lot of other warren cliffs that you might find really nice good uh, tip, but not too thin. We got an eighth of an inch thick that basically stays the whole way. The plunge lines are excellent on both the aluminum and carbon fiber versions. I'm going to be running in with you today. Uh, good saber grinds as well. So the the grind is a saber grind. Thin, you know, long blade. Think of like knives, say like the Osborne series from Benchmade, uh, stuff like that. That's definitely I think where they're kind of you know aiming at targeting. Uh, in the marketplace. Now, 20 CV steel, uh, an excellent steel, American, you know, uh, blade steel that usually is about 62 on the Rockwell. I don't know what these are. Uh, I wasn't able to discover that, but that's usually where it runs. Um, very premium, definitely in the realm of like M390 and those type of uh, steels. Rather corrosion resistant, uh, not as corrosion resistant as some other ones out there, but will also um, hold its edge for a good period of time. Now, the edge. How do these things cut? There's a reason why week after week, when I test a blade, I go through the cardboard and the cordage and you know those type of things. What I discovered when I first opened these and got them out of the box, these have fat, thick edges. They are definitely not as sharp as I prefer my pocket knives to be when I get them out of the box. And in fact, the carbon fiber version was so dull, I don't really have any concerns doing what I'm doing right here on my finger. And basically I had to force through a string of paracord. It was very difficult to get it through a piece of paracord. Now, the edge is well done. It's just very thick, super, super thick behind the edge. The aluminum version was better, but still not to the level that I expect out of most of my pocket knives, particularly at the premium you know, level, EDC. You know, we want fine, thin, wicked sharp edges. The blade asks for that. It's begging for that. And neither one of my models had that, and the carbon fiber was basically borderline unusable and needs to be completely redone. And at least the aluminum was usable, but definitely not to the place and standard that I would expect. And so that to me, outside of all the blade aspect, you know, fit and the, the, the grind, the plunge lines, all of that are good and centered. There's the grinding is not off. It just means I've got to now put a lot of elbow grease into this premium steel to get it to an edge geometry that is usable and performs the way that the knife should you be used right out of the gate. After I put my edge on it, that's the way it should come from the factory. Now it's excellent. So how about this pivot lock, the thumb studs deployment, just how is all that, you know, running together on these models. Now, again, just having the freedom to be able to do this is so much fun with that pivot lock. You got good, traction points they're not sharp they are exposed above the handle scales enough to grab onto and that allows you with the spring tension to pull back that will release the blade you could literally just swing it like that open and close it all day long and have fun good solid thick stop pin 
back there. If you can see that, there you go. So the blades will engage on the back spine right there, which is good. It's just fun. So it's nice that you know the patent has been released on this. So now the market can work with these, play with them. Now they have what they call a frictionless pivot anti-roll washer system in here. Sounds really technical, sounds really cool. Um, the you know the deployment is definitely smooth my camera's just having issues today there we go come on there we go um it's kind of copper in there on both i don't know if that's just on purpose i don't know if that's like part of what they're trying to do with the design so you can see that there i'm gonna be honest with you yes it's smooth yes it feels good uh, it's not loud it's not you know rattly or clanky you don't hear ball bearings or anything like that so i believe they're just washers because that's what it says anti-roll washer system the lockup is just like basically any other pivot locking mechanism I've seen. So there's, you know, the ever so slightest side to side, good up and down. A little bit of side to side, none up and down. So, um, you know, yeah, it's just like any other Benchmade, any of the other Gerbers now that are starting to use these um, type of locking mechanisms and several other brands, um, you know, that are out there. It's good. It's functional. It's ambidextrous. I like that type of locking mechanism. Um, but the anti-roll, I mean, it's not like blowing my mind in any way, even though it sounds, you know, super cool. And yes, it is super smooth and good lockup. Um, both of these have good centering as well. Now, separately from that are these thumb studs that are a little bit of an enigma. On the carbon fiber version, it's going to be a matching thumb stud with the tubed pillars for the handle as well as matching the blade. On the aluminum, you're going to have it matching the tubed kind of bronze copper style handle um, pillars right there as well as kind of the pivot point in there. So it's a copper looking style. I like it a lot. And it's got a cool little design to it. It's not sharp at all. Um, it's a little bit on the small side, but it has never been something that I can't engage. You know, like like the Sedulos there, you can see is just a little bit larger in diameter and protrudes slightly more. It's not bad. I mean, I can always engage it. And this is definitely supposed to be you know, a little bit more of like a gentleman folder EDC, not like a heavier duty folder. But this is a completely ambidextrous blade. The lock is completely ambidextrous. The pocket clip is completely ambidextrous. But the thumb stud is not. You have to unscrew it and then put it over on the left-handed side if you're a lefty. Uh, and, and the way it happens, it's not like a torque screw in there or something. I mean, it's a nut. And so you literally have to get like a little mini ratchet set or just like uh, some sort of crescent wrench or something to untighten this thing and then screw it back in, which is... I would be stunned if you didn't mar it in some way. And I don't like, I mean, no, normal, regular wear is fine, but on, you know, this price range, this kind of like top tier folder, I don't want to be because of a tool just trying to get the thumb stud over the other side. Uh, I, I don't know. And it kind of throws off the flow of the blade. I, don't, I just don't know why they didn't come up with some design that was just ambi and like keep it. So it's just weird, a little bit of enigma to me. It's fully functional. You'll be able to rotate it. Um, if you're the 10% that is left-handed, uh, out there, but it would have been nicer just to have an ambi thumb stud and then forget it. And you don't even have to worry about it. You just swap the pocket clip. You're done. So the pocket clips will definitely stand out compared to a lot that I've seen. They just seem to have a little bit more attention to detail, density and milling around the edges. There's no sharp edges on them. You got the Gerber, you know, low, um, you know, stamped in there cut in laser cut in there some little gaps a little bit of a flare but nothing too crazy and they're strong i mean they're not like flexy uh, and then we have recessed screws right there uh, and then you have an accent plate on the other with some jimp and what i really like about that is that it makes it very easy to get a good pinch point and remove from your pocket now i love my loop over deep ride pocket clips like all of you but i'm finding myself and maybe it's just, you know, haven't been on the road for a year doing our RV life and all that stuff that I tend to prefer having somewhere to grab onto. And this gives you uh, enough of a pinch point right there to grab, pull out, and then use. You do have that lanyard hole um, exposed as well there. And obviously ambidextrous, you just swap the plates and you swap the pocket clips. So righties or lefties, you're going to be set up and ready to rock and roll. So we've got those two different handle scale options that are available uh, you can get the aluminum and that's going to definitely be the cheaper version we'll talk pricing here momentarily uh, and then you got the carbon fiber version uh, now there i don't have my scale currently it's buried somewhere as we're transitioning out of the rv and back 
you know, to the house and stuff. So eventually I'll have my own scale to confirm. What I'm seeing is on from specs and stuff online, about three ounces for the aluminum and like two and a half for the carbon fiber. So you'll be a little bit lighter. They do have steel liners in both uh, that are not milled, but they are nice. And they go partially, as I'm looking conf to confirm that, they go partially through the body. So it's kind of like the center core where these screws are right here. So kind of like all around the pivot and then it narrows and tapers and then the liner goes to about like right here and then there's no liner back here on either model. So it's kind of like a semi scale um, with either carbon fiber or aluminum overlay. This is, I believe, part of Gerber's custom store as well. So there's lots of customization that you can do on their site. Um, that I'll have a link to as well if that's something you want to do. Now the carbon fiber has a really cool pattern to it and uh, is going to be a little warmer to the touch obviously than the aluminum. I'm going to use the aluminum just so that we can see just the functionality a little bit better and some of the angles that they do. Now there's no sharp transitions. It's all milled really nice. You can even see there just like the artistic touch. And Gerber does do a good job with it. They, they have very good designers in the sense of the design of tools over there. Um, just a little cool milling, you know, then it kind of stays flat and then it mills again and, you know, all that, the tubes flow through construction, you know, I mean, it's cool. I mean, it looks really good. I love that kind of like blue gray that this particular aluminum version, you know, has. Uh, it's going to be four and a half inches overall length and then half an inch in thickness. So that means that I'm fully locked in. The neck isn't too narrow. My large size hands have full grip. And the nice, good sweeping guard really keeps me, you know, pinched in, locked in because the there's no traction on the carbon fiber or the aluminum. This, though, is like your choke point that's really going to keep you locked in. And then you feel like you have full control and doesn't create any hot spots. So ergonomically, um, really well thought out. And then the aesthetics to boot with the handle really add to just the flair of it. Definitely feeling more of that premium level of tool than say just like a Sedulo or something like that. Okay, pricing. What is this? blade and this blade come in at now the aluminum is the cheaper model at 200 dollars now for 20 cv american made all the features you know definitely attention to detail um you know that's pretty much what the market is going for right now when you look up other american made 20 cv steel blades they're usually between like 175 and like 225 now the carbon fiber is going to be more at 250 so if you were to ask me between the two, I, I would just, the aluminum to me just makes more sense. Save yourself 50 bucks. You're not going to notice that much of a difference in like, you know, warmth. And unless you really like carbon fiber, um, the aluminum, you know, definitely still gives you a lot. And again, just the only drawback with everything that I'm seeing with the blade is just, it's, you know, disappointing that edge geometry is basically almost unusable and uh, has to be worked right away. Now, hopefully that's just a quality control issue that Gerber can step up easily at the factory, bringing up a steeper relief edge and giving us what we need. Um, in which case I'd be like 100%, this is awesome. Now Gerber did send these two models over to me to be able to test, review, give you guys my pros, give you guys some of the cons so that you can make a choice. You know, is this the style, is this the design you wanna pursue after it? Is it better to go with something else entirely? That's what I always do in these type of videos to give you guys good feedback when you're throwing down your hard earned money. And so I look forward to hearing from you. What is your thought on the Savvy, particularly if you own one already? What's been your experience? Has it been holding up well for you? Um, did your edge geometry, you know, was it thick too or was it, you know, nice and sharp? Uh, I always appreciate the comments below, guys. Uh, and uh, if I miss something, feel free to leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer it for you. And I invite you to subscribe if you're not yet a subscriber. Throwing up content like this every single week. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.